Hello everyone, uh, the reason uh, I am making this video is to talk to you about the first double entry journal because uh, it's not a strategy that most of you are familiar with. Um, the reason I use it is as one of my assignments because it can be very powerful in promoting reading comprehension in the classroom. I got the idea from an article by Carol, Carol Porter O'Donnell and I have a link to it here and I've also uh, have a link to it in uh, ancillary materials if you're interested. You can also Google a double entry journal and you'll find a, uh, many resources on it and, and exemplars and uh, etc etc. Um, <clears throat> I was fascinated by it mainly because of what I felt was a useless practice when students aimlessly highlighted a text and then when they returned to the highlights they typically had no clue oh, why didn't I highlight that uh, and, and why they annotated it. There, there are many ways to annotate. This one I like because you're actually having a conversation with the author or with the text. Uh, so it's not a note-taking exercise uh, but instead a way to have a conversation with the text as I mentioned. Uh, in the left-hand column you put the text quote and page number, and in the right-hand column, you your thoughts, connections, opinions, especially your opinions, and or reasons you felt that was important. It's not a place where you paraphrase or cut and paste quotes from somewhere else. Um, I don't need you to paraphrase it. That's a note-taking exercise. Uh, I want to know your reaction to it. Uh, do you agree with it? Do you not agree with it? Do you, how how it uh, reflects in your own job how, how uh, you plan on using something like this or how you don't think it can be used uh, and support it you know support your opinions with facts um, in this first of two DEJs you're going to be annotating chapter 12 in Salvia Isildike and Whitmer uh, 2017 uh, on response to intervention you ha also have two other resources with which I want you to connect. Chapter 2 in Cohen and Spencer, and I have a link to that and you will see when you uh, when you open that that I have made I've made comments uh, in the margins so pay attention to those comments. Um, and Chapter 2 in Fisher and Fry. Uh, I'm thinking of making uh, comments on that too but um, I haven't done so yet and I'm not sure if I'll have time to do that. Again uh, as in the discussion boards, I am not looking for you to regurgitate what was in these chapters. <clears throat> I want you to use them to support your opinions and your beliefs about the RTI process. You also need to make some text, uh, self to text connections as well as text to text. You know, connect to the uh, ancillary materials. Uh, th that's great for getting an A. Plus. Uh, there's a lot of ancillary materials, so I don't expect you to connect to actually any of them or all of them. Um, uh, the, you should also ask yourself questions. You know what, where, what have you seen where you work? How does it compare with old school remediation? What do you, what do you like about it? What are the drawbacks? What, what are, how can I apply this as a teacher? Um, these are questions you should be asking yourself as, as you are reading. You should comment on the exemplars given in each of the readings as well. Kim Jones and Salvia, Jinsu and Celia, and Cohen and Spencer. Um, and I also think that um, Fisher and Fry talk about Abby. So you should make reference to, to one or all of those uh, in your comments. Uh, to me, the part of RTI that is most overlooked is progress monitoring. I chose the salvia at all text uh, because they not only go into detail, rate of improvement, gap analysis, charting and comparing growth to the average student, uh, but they also include detailed record keeping, something you don't often see or hear about in schools, especially on, in the Kim Jones exemplar. Um, I'm not going to go over exemplars and say why I think they were high and low quality. You're going to be doing that in the mini discussion board I have arranged for that purpose. This is also part of assessment for learning. You know, looking at exemplars and discussing their quality. This will give you a great heads up 
for how you should write your own double entry journal. Make sure you watch my RTI videos and you'll get an inkling of what I think are the big ideas of RTI. Just be aware that I added another characteristic of quality this year, writing style. So the exemplar I gave you um, of the um, grading the double entry journals will be a tad different about how you will grade them. So that's it. Uh, good luck.